Well, it's that time of the year when we celebrate and we recognize the unsung heroes, those working in the background, in the shadows, you know, those sacrificing the pillars, the hands that rock the cradle. You know who I'm talking about? Yes, mothers. It's that time <laughs> of that year when we celebrate mothers. Mother's Day is just around the corner. And today on Inspired Success, I'm going to be introducing to you my Connecticut Inspirational Mother of the Year honoree. Don't touch that remote. I'll be right back. Get ready to find hope. Get ready to be inspired. Get ready to discover your full potential. Get ready for total success from the Total Success Coach, Princess Bola Adelani. Welcome to Inspired Success, your monthly dose of inspiration power, the program that equips you with the power and inspiration for total success. That is success at work and in life. And yes, on Inspired Success today, we are celebrating, we are recognizing on song heroes yes mothers you know you know who i'm talking about they never get paid never go on leave never no vacation but they're always working behind the scenes sacrificing you know busy raising children you know what they say the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world and i'm so excited that at least once a year you know um in the united states at least um we celebrate these women these mothers who are doing amazing 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 job you know and um, on, on inspired success today i'm also very excited um to introduce to you um my um connecticut inspirational mother of the year and and this is how i came about um this honoree i i put a post out there for those of you who are not following me yet socially you better get on the bandwagon <laughs> you know i put out um you know, a post to ask for nominations and a couple of people responded, but one really, really stood out to me. And the, and the reason why it stood out to me was, um, you know, the highlight um, she made, the comment she made about the sacrifice that her mother made, you know, by putting her career, her dream on old to be able to raise, to, to be able to raise her and her sister. And it really warmed my heart. And so with great pleasure, I want to welcome today on Inspired Success, Miss Donna Brown Roberts, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. Thank and you. she is Connecticut Inspirational Mother of the Year. Thank you very as much. As nominated by her daughter, Danielle. Yes. So welcome Hi. to Inspired Success. Thank you. And that's welcome. another sibling, another daughter. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, the younger of the two, right? Yes. And right. Desiree Roberts. Yes. So great pleasure to have you. Two generations of, of women um, on inspired success. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. yes, okay. yes. So let us begin with you. Okay. You know, so I put the post out there, and almost immediately you were one of the few people. You know, the very first pe um, people that responded to to my um, request for nominations. Um, what made you feel like you know? Oh my gosh, you know, it was like it was a no brainer. You almost did it. Yeah like immediately it was like a reflex for you. Um, what made you think that your mother was um, deserving of this honor? Well, as soon as I read your post, Princess Bull, I just felt like it totally encompassed my mom and all that she has done, the sacrifices that she's made in terms of putting her career on hold to raise both myself and my younger sister. And I just felt like, you know, she's kind of been in the background a little bit, not getting the attention that she really deserves as Mother of the Year. And it, so I just felt compelled to nominate her. Oh, awesome, awesome. And would you like to read sure. um, your nomination letter? You know, it was was yeah. intentionally kept. I, I, I asked people to keep it short, no long, more than half a page, because I wanted to see whether people were able in, in oh. you know, one or two or three sentences, mm -hmm. able to capture the essence of what I was looking for in terms of the criteria for the honoree. So um, I know it's short, but um, why don't you read it to your mom? <laughs> this is her first time of, of, sure. of her hearing this, yes. right? Yes. yes. Okay. So yes. go ahead. 
So this is what I wrote to Princess Bola Mom. I said, hi, I'm nominating my mom, Donna Brown Roberts, for the 2015 Mother of the Year Award. She is the most loving, unselfish, considerate, reliable, caring mom that I could ask God to provide me. She started by putting her career on hold to be the stable rock for our family while my dad worked unpredictable hours as a police officer so that she could raise my younger sister and me. She is the reason that I'm an intelligent, talkative, friendly, grounded, self-assured woman today. Even if she does not win this award, she is still the 2015 oh. Mother of the Year in my eyes. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> that is so beautiful. That is beautiful. That got tears in my eyes. They Mine as well. It got me a little <laughs> emotional. How yes. does that make you feel? I mean, I mean, not that you need, um, you know, her validation, but, yes, um, right. you know, how does that make you feel? I mean, does it make you feel, well, it was worth it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm feeling very overwhelmed at this point. I am extremely honored humbled and just blessed that Danielle took the opportunity to send in the nomination. So I just thank you very much, Danielle. I greatly oh, appreciate on. it. Love you. Oh, and, love you. and thank you, Princess Bola, for selecting well, they, oh, me. I greatly appreciate that. I think well deserved, well deserved. Let, let's, let's go into that conversation right away, you know, because many, many um, mothers are mm -hmm. increasingly finding themselves having to you know, sacrifice or play a, a form of a kind of a dual role mm -hmm. in the family as mm -hmm. far as raising kids, you know, either they're doing it by themselves mm -hmm. or like you, you know, one spouse, their spouse is, you know, has a very high profile job or mm -hmm. a very intense job that takes them away from the home. Um, and so, you know, let's talk about the challenges in terms of you raising your your daughters, mm -hmm. um, you know, not really always having your husband present. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it was an absentee yes, father, but I you know understand. what I mean, you know, yes. understand what I'm saying. So don't get it twisted. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, so t let's talk about that kind of how, how challenging w was it? And did you have a blueprint mm -hmm. kind of starting off, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, as a parent, as a mother? Did you have a blueprint? There's no handbook out there. Yes. Where were you getting your inspiration and, and your um, wisdom from? Well, I have to give God credit as well as to my own mother, who was my role model. And she basically uh, provided the blueprint for what a mother should do. My mother is from Jamaica, and she uh, and my dad were married. They had six kids, and they both worked full time. My mother worked as a nurse, and my father worked in, at Pratt & Whitney. And uh, she made it seem so effortless to have six children, work full time, and still pursue things in the church that she desired. So she was my blueprint, and I felt like, you know, my daughters did not ask to be born. Yeah. So it was my responsibility as their mother to train them and to raise them up in the uh, correct way to the best of my ability with the help and grace of God. So I just thank God for my own mother who's, okay. who set the standard. Who set the standard, exactly. And and uh, we're talking about this before the show aired and um, I, f I said that I feel there's something culturally um, still conservative mm -hmm. um, about uh, people from the highlands mm -hmm. and from Africa and, and places like that, the developing countries, mm -hmm. they, where they still esteem some, you know, values and mm -hmm. moral standards Absolutely. and things like that. I think that the Western culture is kind of really moving away from all of that. Yes. And so you're, you're saying that that really impacted you. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, and, and so what kind of mom was she, Desiree? <laughs> Was she strict? Was she like me? Did you get a little spanking now and again and timeouts and, and things like that? Um, no spankings. Oh, she was really good about keeping her hands off of us unless it was a hug or something. Yeah. But um, I think overall, me coming up even as a teenager in those years, she definitely made it clear that she was not going to be my friend, but that she was going to be my mom. And now that I'm an adult, I can look at her more of a friend, but I think if coming up I looked at her as a friend, the respect would not be where it is today. Mm. So um, it actually ended up turning out good, but I would have friends that would look at their mom as their friends, and I would see the way they would talk to them, and I'd always be like, how is this happening? <laughs> but really, it's just dependent on 
mother setting the standard from young where it's like I'm the boss and you're going to listen and then when you become an adult we can reason together but until you have that mature mindset I'm not going to put that kind of pressure on you to make mature adult decisions mm, if you're you've not. touched on quite a bit there that is huge <laughs> if you're just tuning in by the way this is inspired success and this this month we are um celebrating my inspirational mother of the year honoree miss donna brown roberts and uh, we're talking with her we're gleaning wisdom we're talking to her daughters and desiree just touched on something very important this idea of okay are you a parent are you a mom or are you a friend and, 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 and so, you know, the roles become kind of twisted and the lines become gray mm -hmm. because there's this mindset, I don't know where it's coming from, that somehow, um, you know, our parents should be our friends mm -hmm. and, and, you know, your daughters should be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to that? Especially now with the culture, like I was saying earlier, you, we're finding more and more especially in our culture, women being single mothers, mm -hmm. head of households, they're getting, they're becoming mothers even younger and yes. younger, you yes. know? Yes. And, and so where is the line drawn? Well, what would you say about this, you know, friend and authority figure and all that? Why is it important when kids are growing up for you to be an authority figure and not necessarily a friend? Well, it's vital to draw a clear line of delineation between friendship and mothering and my daughters have plenty of friends but they have one mother and in order for them to respect me i believe that you have to uh not blur the lines mm. um because it's important in order to you know get them to respect you you have to respect yourself and if you're trying to be their friend then uh you're not going to really tr treat them uh, the way you should and they won't have the respect for you that they should and they have to be taught right and wrong and their friends are going to agree with them on various things but it takes a mother to say you know I love you but you have to be chastised when you do something wrong and that you cannot blur the lines because they have to know the difference between right and wrong in this world that we live in it's very important and you have to be able to motivate them and it's difficult to motivate someone that you are too friendly with exactly you, know, you have to exactly uh, i agree with you yes I, they have to be motivated i have to encourage them serve as a mentor help them to build their self-worth because they're going into a world that uh, can be very crazy at times yes. and so they have to be intelligent enough to know that they uh they need to be respected and they have to respect themselves and if i'm treating them as a friend then i believe that the respect is lost i don't want to be feared by my daughters i want to be respected because when you're respected you're able to get uh more tangible things from them than if you're feared because uh, people don't want to fear you yes. i don't want my daughters no, you to don't fear want me the fear you want the respect and there are two different things there yes. and so you've touched about two different things your children need to respect you and you said something very crucial and i'd like you to look in that camera and tell them you need to respect yourself absolutely you know, the mothers need to respect themselves absolutely and so you know if sometimes we have to take responsibility mm -hmm. whenever we don't see that respect yes you know when we don't see when we are not getting the respect we have to ask ourselves you know sometimes are we positioning ourselves mm -hmm. you know as well exactly to, to, to receive the, the to receive respect yes. and then um you know let's talk also then about academically at the academic achievements because your younger daughter is a sophomore right oh so, junior junior, junior. Yeah. oh my gosh i keep demoting you right <laughs> <laughs> I said you said you, you took it as a compliment. You said that was mean I look re pretty young. Yeah, uh, you do. You look younger. Um, so you're a junior in a, a, in a local college in you know in in Connecticut, and and you're a, you're a, you graduated six yes. years ago. Yes, and. Um, from Sarah Cruz, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and so both of them are pursuing, mm -hmm. you know, um, education, you know, mm -hmm. to obviously um, college, university yes. level at yes. the very least. Mm -hmm. um, how, 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 how were you able to motivate them in a culture where, you know, it's not popular, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's not popular for people of color, for mm -hmm. our daughters to 
pursue higher education. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so what, what was the inspiration for you? And, and where were you able to, or, or, you know, set the expectation? When, at what point were you able to set that expectation? Well, for me personally, in the household that I grew up in, I call it the Jamaican household, <laughs> yes. uh, education was primary. Yeah. Uh, it was the forefront of everything that we discussed. It was, there was no uh, discussion that I wasn't <laughs> going to finish high school. Yes. And we, you know, always thought that we would go to college and graduate from college. And I instill that in my daughters as well, because education is vitally important. Um, it's necessary to achieve in this world. And I believe that mothers are the first teachers. And mm. if you don't set the standard in your household regarding education, then your children will think that it's not that important. So what they see that's important to you will then in turn somehow become important to them. Yes, I, I, and Danielle, at what point did you realize, you know, you growing up that it was just an expectation. It was like in my household, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm from, I'm originally from Nigeria and, um, I'm a naturalized citizen, so my kids mm -hmm. are the first generation Americans as well. And, um, you know, uh, it's an expectation. It's a, We just don't, Absolutely. it's just expected, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> when they're already talking about college mm -hmm. and, you know, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> career, what mm -hmm. they want to do when they grow up, things like that. So at what point did you realize that this in my household, in my family, my mm -hmm. mother, you know, my there was an expectation that I was going to not only finish high school, but go to college. Yes. I would say, Princess Bola, from the time that I was very young, probably even in elementary school, we there were conversations about high school and, you know, life after high school and college. And, you know, like my mom said, it, it, that was not a topic that was up for discussion or for debate. It was like, hands <laughs> down, this is a given, you're going to college. And I think it ties into what my sister said earlier about, you know, when the mother knows her role and she's not trying to be your friend or trying to be your sister, there were just that respect level was there. And certain things we knew she was not going to budge on. And college and finishing high school were two well, of those things. It was one of those Absolutely. things. It was just, yeah. And now tell us with dad, and because um, that's another challenge that I'm finding finding, you know, with more and more mothers. If you're just tuning in, by the way, this is really, I'm being, really being blessed here, being inspired, uh, you know, just by the conversations, by your wisdom. And, and um, you know, you I can see why your kids are very level-headed because you're grounded yourself. Thank you're you. solid. They're those, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can tell that <laughs> inner strength and fortitude is there, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so sometimes people get fooled by the, you know, the outward look, you yeah. know, it yes. might look, you know, but I, I can tell this is a lioness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> now let's come to the relationship between mm -hmm. the parents, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's huge um, because, yeah, I've been in, uh, yeah, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. And it's important that dad um, reinforces supports absolutely and comes alongside mom yes in the in in our efforts yes and um so were there any kind of um conflicts going on behind the scenes um you know how how were you able to deal number one with you know his public you know having such a public career and a public life mm -hmm. really um and and then you number two was there um, I'm, I'm asking so many questions here now. <laughs> Was there any kind of resentment? I've always looked at the first lady of the United States, for okay. example, right? Mm -hmm. She's well uh, accomplished herself, yeah. yes, you she know. Is. And you yes, are also is. well accomplished. Thank you have you. a master's, yes, right? I do. You know, you're very well accomplished, very well educated. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you, you, you chose, I believe yes. you chose to kind of play down and sacrifice mm -hmm. your career mm -hmm. to be able to, number one, not just raise the kids, mm -hmm. but to allow your husband to be able to grow in his career and focus and, and all that. Was there any time at which you felt um, resentful um, and you felt, you know what, I, I, I want to be out there too. I want to, mm -hmm. you know, it's time for you to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping it real, right? <laughs> Because yes. I, I mentor yeah. a lot of women who, who who tell me, you know, sometimes they feel, you know, unappreciated by their spouse and they feel like, you know what, 
you know, it's his time now to come sit here and, and allow me to pursue my dreams and things like that. Um, so at any point in time, did you feel, you know, a, a little bit resentful? I, I feel like sometimes, too, coming to number number three, uh, will you look back, will you have done it differently? Mm -hmm. Because we were talking about, Danielle and I, mm -hmm. how you have sacrificed mm -hmm. and you, you put your career on hold, you just did part-time work, non-profit, for non -prof mm -hmm. profits And now when you would really like to yes. pursue more, the, because of that sacrifice, yes. you're not quite, you know, able to, you know. So would you have done it differently? Would you have said, done it differently? Um, so I guess those are the, the three questions <laughs> in one. So let's start with um, how important was it for having his support yes. and were there any conflicts going on behind the scenes in terms of, okay, how you are parenting, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, in the household, my husband and I are both uh, working in concert when it comes to education. We both, uh, you know, believe that education is tantamount and it's very important. Yeah. And so we were on the same page with that. Yeah. Oftentimes his work schedule did not allow him to be around uh, often in the home so it was incumbent upon me to decide that you know it's best for our daughters um, you know as they were younger for me to be available for them so I did take part-time positions temporary positions uh, grant-based positions things that were on the school calendar which yes. uh, coincided with my daughter's schedules yes. so that I could be av available for them because if most moms know and most people know that between the ages uh, the hours I'm sorry from 3 to 6 p.m when middle schoolers and high schoolers are out of school, that a lot of things can happen if they're not supervised. So I wanted to make myself readily available for that, my daughters. At that time. Exactly, because most uh, students that are in elementary school, they have supervision after school. But it's the middle schoolers and the high schoolers that you know parents sort of push away and say, oh, you know, it's okay, you can be a latchkey kid. My daughters were not latchkey kids. I wasn't a latchkey kid. Yeah. My parents worked opposite shifts so that uh, they could be available yes. to us. So I felt that I needed to be available for our daughters as well. And um, and, and was that, um, was there any, never any major, you know, different, um, you know, um, I, I, opinions or ideas in terms of how you were doing it, how you were running, where you, you know, you were the stricter of the two, yes. right? Yes. And so were there any times <laughs> where he felt, okay, to, you know, tone it down or keep, yes. you know? Well, my husband's in law enforcement. However, I was the law enforcer in our house. So that so it's a little switched, different. You switched, you switched. Absolutely. We switched roles. Oh, and, yeah. and I believe that because I'm the same gender parent, yes. it was important for me to portray an image that I want my daughters to follow. And, and he didn't have any problems with that? Not, not at not all. Not well, that, okay. that freed him up because his schedule varied okay. so often. Okay. It allowed him to be able to pursue his career and move to the top uh, exactly, of his position. Exactly, exactly. And would you have done it differently looking back now? Would you, because can women have it all? Can women have yeah. it all? There are still those who say, who would be watching today and say, you know, well, good for her. She <laughs> had a partner who maybe could, his income mm -hmm. made it, uh, allowed you mm -hmm. to be able to work part-time. Mm -hmm. Some pe women, you know, mothers watching now are saying to themselves, I don't have that luxury. Right. My, my, mm -hmm. my baby, my father or whoever, spouse or whatever, you know, is not that um, financially able to support the family. Mm -hmm. And and so I have to work full mm -hmm. time. I, I don't have that luxury. So, you know, will you, what would you say? What would you say? Would you look him back? Would you say, you know, I could have done it all. I would have done it differently. And what would you say to those 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 mothers out there who don't have that support? Right. Um, well, first and foremost, I believe that females can do it all, but not at the same time. And okay. you have to take a step back and look at your priorities. For me, although I have a master's in public administration, my priority was not to pursue the career because I had a spouse that was pursuing his career at the time. My priority were my daughters. As I said, they didn't ask to be born. And I, I, I wanted them and I wanted to make sure that they were, you know, brought up in the right way in the admonition of God. And, you know, I think that is vitally important to be on one, with one accord with your spouse regarding that. For the females that cannot uh, do that because they don't have a spouse, you still have to take time out for your children. If you're going to, you know, 
be a mother, you have to do what's best for your children, first and foremost, because they didn't ask to be here. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And you kept saying that they didn't ask to be here. Okay? They didn't. And That's it's right. true. And so when you make that decision, you know it's a lifetime commitment, really. Absolutely. It never really ends. Yes. Because even after she graduated, mm -hmm. working, and all of that, you're still there to mentor, to give wisdom, to yes. give guidance. And then there was something you touched on as we are about to close we're not out of words but we're out of time i told you Ooh, that time yeah, will go pretty it, fast it, it <laughs> yeah. yes but it's been really fun really i mean just having this conversation with you very successful young women grounded women um just an example really mm -hmm. and then i want to just as we close and present to you your a certificate of achievement so you have another you. one now right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you have a master's you have a degree Bachelor's. now you have this <laughs> yes. you know Great. um it is a huge achievement thank i feel you. it is phenomenal thank you um, and, and i feel like it's one that god is proud of and that's why i want Absolutely. us to kind of um wrap up you know in terms of thank you, you know you're welcome it's, it, <laughs> it is a trust yes. it is a trust you know being a mother is a trust god is entrusting you and so let's talk about that in one minute because we we don't have much time in terms of how your faith mm -hmm. really um helped you and, and continues to help you as you raise your daughters and if they can if they can talk in one second too about did you at any time feel deprived as teenagers growing up in this kind of household, you know, both your parents, um, your, you know, your, your dad, a public figure, you know, um, Chris, Christians, I know the, the standards are higher, yes. you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> the standards are higher. So at any time, did you feel like, oh, deprived? I want to be like everybody else. She's <laughs> too strict or, you know, I want to go be wild. You know, I don't feel like, did you at any time feel like that? No, our Good. faith was instilled in us from the time that we were born. And even both of us were in private schools, um, Catholic schools, which is very similar to our Christian faith. So I never felt and deprived never did. at all. And, well, no. and you? No. Not really? It, I just, I kind rebel? of felt like I was like out of the loop of what they could okay, do. Okay. Yeah, like, no, I didn't feel like deprived, deprived. or upset. I, I just know. felt like, oh, you know, I can't stay out as late with my friends. Okay. And, and that was a little upsetting, but it wasn't like, oh man, I'm really upset, you know? Yeah. Kind of like yeah. in the middle somewhere. But um, going to college and seeing the way that people acted definitely made me thankful for the way that I was raised. Yeah, you were raised. So, absolutely. Amen, I would agree amen, with that. Amen, yes. amen. And what would you say in terms of, you know, your faith, prayer, faith, church, you know, to someone who is just feeling so lost? Because I know that that is your source of wisdom and inspiration Absolutely. as a rebel. Yes. yes. And I just like to end with Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child that in the way that he should go, that when he gets old, he will not depart from it. Amen. And I just thank God for that. Amen. 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 So that's it as far as Inspired Success is concerned today. I'll see you next month. This is Princess Bola Adelani, the total success coach, reminding you to keep smiling. Hey, put a smile on your face. You know, <laughs> life's too short. Keep believing, keep networking, keep learning, and keep on keeping on. I'll see you next month. And, you know, comment and share your post and everything. Give me your feedback. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm everywhere. <laughs> RoyalProclamations.com. Thank you for watching.